lucky mm -hmm. that I was told to stay in this metal cabin. Yeah. Now, I, I can't even remember the name of the officer who was with me. So there was just him, him and myself <coughs> in this metal cabin. Mm -hmm. And the cabin was about, oh, maybe 10 feet square mm -hmm. with a table in the middle and the door at the back facing out to sea. Well, the, um, the action was taking place even before we got to shore. Mm -hmm. And the um, British planes were swooping down, dropping smoke-producing shells all along the beach to hide the men as they tried to run across this open beach. And um, uh, every once in a while I would stick my nose out and look around and see what was going on. But I had to duck back in again because I was constantly receiving messages uh, from uh, head office. The, um, unfortunately, the, the Germans were also transmitting. And they, they were very good. Um, but I knew each of my three men, and I knew their style. Now, you, you, you can't imagine dot, dit, dot, dit, dot, dit, having much individuality between two men. Mm -hmm. But there is a difference. There's mm -hmm. a slight stretching of paws and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the uh, dot, dit, dot, dit, dot, dit, uh, I know which one was, was uh, transmitting. So when I, when I hear uh, a transmission from um, a German source, I just <laughs> shrugged it off. So, but they kept going. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the machine guns up on the, on the cliff were armor-piercing. Armor and uh, they, they, were, they had two uh, German 99-millimeter uh, cannons and a French 75 millimeter all in a row at the top of the, wow. the cliffs. And they were, their job was to pick off the, the tanks so that they couldn't retreat and uh, um, knock out the uh, TLCs so we couldn't retreat. Once they knocked us out, then we were sitting ducks. Mm -hmm. So um, they did a fair job on the, on the tanks uh, and they knocked out number number five, I think it was uh, TLC, and it went up on a bunch of smoke. And there was another one, I think it was a number seven, and it pulled back with a bunch of wounded on it, and pulled back out, but it got sunk too. Um, that left me the lucky one. Mm -hmm. um, I just carried on and uh, yakety yak with the officer as much as I could uh, between action and uh, all of a sudden uh, instead of machine gun bullets hitting the hitting my cabin um, the 99 millimeter took uh, aim at me missed me a couple of times and I could since I was looking out the back I could see the big fume of, of water rise up about a hundred feet in the in the air wow. uh, but um, finally they they hit right behind the cabin and my door was open and the concussion knocked me across the room fortunately it was just the concussion it wasn't it wasn't shrapnel or anything like that so it knocked me out for a few minutes and I came to um, shortly with uh, the, the captain was slapping my cheeks and saying, you're all right, Rickard? You all right, Rickard? <laughs> because uh, I could transmit these signals better than he could, so he didn't want to, <laughs> he didn't want to lose me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I got back up and put things back on again and continued on until we got the order to uh, 
uh, retreat. And uh, um, I was, as, as is hard to imagine, but I was 20, what would I be, 23 or 24 at the time, um, and pretty darn naive. And, and uh, I didn't, I, I didn't worry too much about getting hurt. I was either going to get killed or I wasn't. Uh, it is, mm. It's uh, it's hard to believe if somebody would have that attitude, and I, I can hardly believe it myself now, but uh, I wasn't too worried. And when we uh, got out into uh, the sea, I learned that one of our engines had been knocked out. Um, but I just uh, figured, well, it's over, and I took my headphones off and climbed up on the the, the side wall of mm -hmm. the TLC, which was about that wide, and walked around to the uh, to the front end. Then I tried to find BBC, so uh, I couldn't I couldn't uh, make much headway there. But uh, uh, after about oh twenty minutes or half an hour to get across the 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 you know, Straight. What? What is it? The English Channel, I guess they call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were getting close to shore, and uh, I could see the I could see the shore, and I was <clears throat> just, you know, nonchalant. The war was over, as far as I was concerned. But um, I was suddenly aware that three fellows that were sitting in front of me all had rifles, and they were all shooting like this. And so I, I looked up, and there was a Messerschmitt come zooming across. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he went up in the air and came back down again. And <laughs> I knew what he was after, so I was the only ship um, making any headway. So they wanted to make sure I stopped. I didn't have any choice. I had to get the hell out of there. So I did. I jumped over. And uh, left my wireless set on the on the TLC and jumped in with my clothes on and tried to get most of my clothes off. And my first thought was to swim like hell trying to get away from the propellers. I didn't want to get chopped up. <clears throat> so I managed that all right. And they just kept on going. I don't know. They probably didn't know that I was fool enough to jump in the water. I tried swimming, but uh, with, with boots on, it's almost impossible. So I spent about 10 minutes trying to get the laces undone, wet boots. And uh, I thought at first I would tie the, 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 the laces together and put them around my neck so that when I arrived on shore, I'd have something to wear. <laughs> but uh, that didn't prove uh, practical, so I, I just had to drop them. But I kept my clothes on. Mm -hmm. And I managed. When I got to shore, I just stretched out on the beach. I wasn't going to go for any more of this nonsense of, uh, of reporting in and uh, <coughs> all this to do. So I didn't report in. So I just lay it on, on the beach in the sun until it dried off. And then I wandered around <coughs> and there was, a, there was a, um, an army truck came by. So I stuck my hand out, <coughs> and he stopped. <laughs> I said, where are you going? And he said, uh, we're, we're going to, uh, where was it, uh, a part of, part of London. Mm -hmm. So I said, OK, I'm, I'm good. Let's go. So we went. It was, took us about an hour to get into London. And uh, after I came out, I hitchhiked back to camp. And as I was walking up, um, one of my men, a fellow by the name of George Lewis, who was an excellent uh, rifleman, and he was supposed to, he was assigned to look after me. We, he didn't have a hard job because I was in the cabin. When he was coming down from the camp, and he saw me coming up, and he said, am I allowed to say something like this? Yeah. Okay, you, you can say whatever you want. Oh, he said, Jesus Christ, it's record. 
<laughs> so I said, hi, Lewis. <laughs> and uh, so we just uh, um, embraced, I suppose, and, and turned around and walked back into camp. And, and uh, I reported in, and that was <clears throat> about the end of my day. <laughs> <laughs>